Uh, g'day guys, back with another one of Nathan Bell's commentary videos. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow Nate on social media for more of these insights, musings, and in this case, a prophecy about nuclear war. Yeah, well, for years, so much of my art has been themed around war and conflict, um, uh, you know, and particularly around nuclear war. Uh, in my 20s, I produced my music video, Apocalyptic Nightmare, which told the story of a man having a nightmare um, where he fled the city because a nuclear war was about to happen. I played the man in the music video. Uh, it was directed by Ian Nicholson from Hyperdriven in Sydney, who I paid to do it for me. Uh, and I've designed clothing, anti-nuclear weapons clothing, um, and I've written a, a post-apocalyptic book set in Australia after a nuclear war. So, you know, I, and I love those movies about surviving nuclear war. I don't know why I've just always been obsessed with surviving nuclear war and thinking what life would be like to survive nuclear war. Um, maybe I just want chaos, you know, I don't know. Um, who would wish that on the world? Um, but, um, you know, I, uh, it comes down to the fact that for some reason I've always actually believed that it is my divine destiny to survive the nuclear war and then to help rebuild humanity after the nuclear war. And this has been a delusion that's been with me for years. It's part of my Messiah complex, which I talked about in a previous video. Um, my purpose in life is to, I am here, placed here by God, divine, to I am an angel who has come from heaven to survive the nuclear war and then guide humanity to rebuild the world after the nuclear war. And if you read uh, my book, Kings of the New Age, The Quest of the Balancing Stones, the main character, Nate, is based on me, only I'm not a magician in real life, and he is. And he has a psychic premonition that there will be a nuclear war, then the book starts two years after the nuclear war, then they go on an epic adventure to use magic to heal the world from radiation poisoning. Um, so I always live with this um, belief that there is going to be an atomic war in my lifetime and I sort of expect it all the time. And whenever something comes up in the news, like I read an article the other day saying it looks like Russia is preparing to conduct a new nuclear test. There haven't been any nuclear tests in years. Um, and then I'm like, I spent the next day convinced that the war was going to happen, you know. When the when the things break out in the Ukraine, I start to think, oh, this is going to lead to World War Three, and the nuclear war is going to happen and my destiny is going to come true. Um, and then, you know, the conflict in Israel, I think, oh, this will escalate to a World War Three, and then my, my destiny will come true and we'll survive the apocalypse and rebuild. Um, Every time something, and this is why I so enthusiastically follow geopolitics, because I'm always looking for when the war is going to break out. Um, but in my fantasy, it's developed over the last few years, particularly around writing Kings of the New Age, and now I believe that after the nuclear war, Newcastle um, will become the capital of the new world, and, and we'll, we will be a democracy. So essentially, after the nuclear war, I've realised there will be a flood of refugees because after every war, there is a flood of refugees to Australia and particularly after the nuclear war because in my mind, it's probably only going to be a small exchange. I don't think any of our world leaders are insane enough to let it escalate to, you know, three, four hundred nuclear bombs going off. If three, four hundred nuclear bombs going off, go off, I believe the environment will collapse and all life on the planet will die within 50 years uh, and the planet will become desolate like Mars. But if only, you know, if it's only a small conflict and 30 or 40 bombs go off mostly in the northern hemisphere, I think the planet can recover. So what happens in my book, Kings of the New Age, The Quest of the Balancing Stones, around 30 nuclear bombs go off mostly in capital cities in America and China and Europe. Um, and there is a massive... Um, you know, nuclear winter in the northern hemisphere, but largely the southern hemisphere escapes the radiation. The fallout doesn't quite make it to Australia. It sort of settles over the ocean. Um, and what happens is immediately after the bombs go off, the millions of people flood to nearby boats and aeroplanes and immediately abandon the northern hemisphere. Millions of people, 200 million people flood to Australia and then all of a sudden the Australian continent is flooded with 200 million people from all over the world and all these little settlements start popping up around the country where all these desperate people are living in poverty 
um, in Australia because all the 200 million people I, I, I considered when I wrote the book come to Australia after the nuclear war. So we then... Australia already has all different types of people from all around the world, but when these people come, like the country becomes overpopulated with all different types of people from all around the world, um, and because the radiation doesn't make it all the way here, it settles over the ocean, and when the nuclear winter stays isolated to the northern hemisphere, we're able to rebuild the world here. So the continent of Australia becomes the new world, um, and we build massive walls around Newcastle for protection and security because all law and order has broken down um, and Newcastle becomes the capital of the new world in the new age where we're going to rebuild humanity. Um, so yeah, so, so that's what I'm thinking now and that's basically the gist of what's happening in Kings of the New Age, The Quest of the Balancing Stones. And I'm going to write at least three books in that series and they're really going to tell the story of the emergence of a new a new kingdom, although it's not a kingdom because in the story Newcastle is a democracy, um, but it's basically about the emergence of a new kingdom or a new empire in Australia with Newcastle as the capital where we're rebuilding civilization and the country is overpopulated with 200 million refugees from all around the world. So yeah, so you know, do I believe this is going to happen? It depends what day you ask me. Some days I'm rational, some days I'm delusional. I've always been like that. On the days when I'm delusional and there's something in the news about global conflict, I probably do, if you're speaking to me, in the back of my mind believe that there's going to be a nuclear war in my lifetime. Other days I'm more rational and I think, oh, you know, it might happen. But really my view is um, as long as nuclear weapons exist in the world, there is always the ongoing threat that there will be a nuclear conflict, which is why, uh, and because of this delusion, is why I so passionately uh, do activism around uh, promoting nuclear deproliferation and the abolishment of nuclear weapons. Because really, if enough nuclear weapons go off, I reckon the whole environment will break down, the whole planet will fall apart, um, and it will become desolate like Mars. Um, but, you know, we see now that, uh, you know, there's still people living around Chernobyl and there are still animals living around Chernobyl and they have some mutations, um, but they're still living uh, and people still live there. So I think um, I think what we're learning is from Chernobyl, uh, you know, 40 years or however long it's been after, um, is that actually people can, and, and life can survive being in a nuclear uh, contaminated zone. Uh, I think people tend to lose years off their life, but they can still get on if they're far in, in, in this sort of must be an area from the blast radius where, where you can manage to live and continue living. Um, so maybe it won't be that bad. Maybe everybody won't die and there won't be all these big mutations. Maybe we'll learn that people can adapt and change uh, and that people can survive. Um, but that's what I think is going to happen, you know, there's going to be a nuclear arm again. And sometimes I'll say to you, I think that just because nuclear weapons exist, there is going to be a nuclear war inevitably, unless we can come together as a global community um, and agree to, to, to disassemble all our nuclear weapons. And even if you get rid of all the nuclear weapons, then you have the threat that some maniac... Um, will come up and will build new nuclear weapons. So you get rid of all the nuclear weapons, they're all gone, then you've got to strictly police the whole world to make sure that no maniac makes any new nuclear weapons because if some maniac makes new nuclear weapons and nobody else has got nuclear weapons, then the maniac will just start threatening the rest of the world and demand submission, uh, and that's the argument of mutually assured destruction, um, that it's better for everyone to have nuclear weapons rather than one maniac who can stand over the rest of the world with the only nuclear weapons. So that's the mutually assured destruction argument, and I've thought about both sides of that. So again, I want to say, if you get rid of all the nuclear weapons, you can't you can't think it's that simple. It's not as simple as everybody just agreeing to get get rid of the nuclear weapons. Once you get rid of them, you've got to constantly enforce the globe to make sure that nobody builds any new ones. Otherwise, they will have the upper hand. So it's not just oh, get rid of all the nuclear weapons and everything will be great. You know, once you do it, you've got to make sure you've got to keep check on everyone around the planet and make sure nobody's going to build any new nuclear weapons. So. No, I think about it too much uh, because I'm a delusional maniac. Um, 
So, uh, and last time I was in the psych ward, I really thought there was going to be a nuclear war, and I got really scared about it. It was funny in hindsight. Um, but, you know, that's my prophecy, guys. Newcastle is going to, in the Hunter Valley, is going to become the new democratic kingdom of the new world after the atomic war. So drop a comment in the comment section and tell me what you think about that.